Back in the late 90s and early 2000s, computers began transitioning from a geek's toy to more of a mainstream appliance. Instead of plain beige cases, Dell tried to portray their cases as being more of the premium choice. Dude, you're getting a Dell. This is one of those PCs. There were multiple versions and revisions of this case, but all had similar problems. In its day, this wasn't a bad looking PC, and it's even fairly easy to work on. However, that's where the positives end. You might notice something different about it. Something's missing. How does air get into the case? There's no vents in the front or the sides. Nope, it's all around back. This area is where the hot air exhaust exits, and right next to it, that's where it takes cool air in. I'll talk about that more in a minute. The case opens like a clamshell, pivoted from the front. Dell was very proud of this design as they pushed their products as toolless cases, saying you could swap out components with no tools needed, and that's partially true but there were some major design flaws. As you can see, nearly every capacitor on this motherboard is bad. This is due to two things. One, bad capacitors, and two, bad thermals. You can see this sort of thing didn't happen after 20 years. These motherboards would die within the first year or two. Uh, the bad capacitor plug was something, and that was around when this computer was produced. But the poor ventilation and thermal management within these PCs definitely contributed. Here's how the airflow works in this case. You have the CPU fan, which blows hot air towards the back of the case, and most of it exits out the back. Because the CPU fan is not mounted flush with the rear vent, some of that air deflects off and vents back into the case. There's also a fan in the power supply, which pulls warm air from the case, blows it through the power supply, and out the back. So where does the air enter the case? In the center of these two hot exhausts. Because of this, it also pulls in some of that hot exhaust air. So it never really gets the cooler air that it needs. Oh, but there's more. The CPU fan, while it's a pretty hefty one, is temperature controlled by its own thermistor, as you can see here. The hotter the air that passes over it, the faster the fan spins. This is the only thing that manages the internal temperature of this case, or the CPU. This method's simple and used for all sorts of other applications. But it's not the best solution here. What if for some reason air can't get to the fan? Like say the heatsink is clogged with dust and lint? Well, instead of the fan running faster to compensate, it's, it'll actually run slower since less hot air is getting to the sensor. And this happened all the time. Eventually the PC would just shut off. When restarted, it would simply say thermal event detected and continues to boot. That is if you have one of the later BIOS revisions. An early BIOS version says nothing, so people had zero idea why their PC would just shut off. Later in the video, I'll demonstrate in real time how poor the thermals were in this case. This PC, when I got it, wouldn't even power up or post because of all these bad caps. The electrolytic fluid inside these capacitors is extremely corrosive. Luckily, somehow none found its way onto the board, so all I had to do was remove them and replace them. The ones that got put in are actually used from other motherboards. Uh, they may not be new, but they were all tested first and still within spec. I enjoy doing this sort of thing. It's an excuse to crank up some, you know, progressive rock and just forget about life for a while. Once I got it working, I remembered that you can't actually monitor the CPU and motherboard temp with software with these. So I'll be using a multimeter with a thermocouple. I position the sensor around the center of the case held in place by this uh, heat sink. I close the case and let it just idle for a while. And the case's internal temperature shows around 61 degrees Celsius. I then ran a handbrake to max out the CPU for about 12 minutes and the case temp rose to around 68 degrees. So regardless of what it's doing, the interior is always going to be hot. This is why hard drives don't stand in chance in these things. Here's something else I want to show you. I set the camera down so the mic could pick up the sound of the CPU fan. Watch how quickly it slows down once the case is opened. And here, I did it once again once uh, everything warmed back up. Now the tower versions weren't too bad, but these smaller desktop units, well, we had at least a thousand of them from the Optiplex GX260 to the GX280. Uh, a coworker of mine wanted nothing to do with servers or switching and just wanted to work on PCs. Day in and day out, uh, he swapped motherboards and hard drives from these things. I even set him up his own personal ghost server at his bench. So that's about it. There's so much more that I left out, just wanted to keep the video short. If you're someone who wants to get into tinkering with older P retro PCs, you might want to stay away from these. Um, you know, that is unless you're also comfortable with doing you know, board level repairs. Anyway, I hope everyone had a great holiday, and I'll talk to you next time.